Contrary to common myth, there aren't any planes buried in the boneyard. It's where aeroplanes enter the picture to gain a second or third opportunity. According to my research, aircraft come here to be protected and handled with respect. Okay, so it might have seemed like a butcher shop for this specific B-52. But there are 4,000 aeroplanes and parts housed here and they are all valued a whooping $35 billion. The technology behind this one stealth aircraft alone is undoubtedly very expensive. I believe we got off to a bad start. Let me explain why the Boneyard is not an aeroplane junkyard. As you might expect, there was a significant excess of military aircraft after World War II. It would not have been prudent to scrap all of those old aircraft, because they may have been used again or at the very least, as spare parts. However, it would have required a considerable expenditure to construct big hangars to house the storage of thousands of aeroplanes, some of which were enormous. Fortunately, the desert region close to Tucson, Arizona, offered the ideal setting for an outdoor storage facility, and not simply because of the region's dry environment. The desert offered lots of room. Approximately 2,600 acres are currently under the control of the boneyard. At its height, this facility was home to 6080 aircraft. There was no need to pave that enormous space, either because the earth here was as solid as concrete and would prevent the huge aeroplanes from sinking into the desert bottom. Of course, the dry climate and alkaline soil shielded these aircraft from their worst silent foe. Rust. However, there was a significant issue. The desert heats up quickly. The mercury could get above 100 F or 38 C in Tucson, particularly on those warm, sunny days in the summer. However, enclosed portions of the aircraft, such as the cockpit, may quickly heat up to twice that level, which over time might damage the internal electronics light control systems. Consequently, action was required. Because of this, maintaining aeroplanes and storage or, to be more specific, preserving them is a primary skill set at the boneyard. However, this facility offers a wide range of services in addition to storage. Due to this, the Boneyard is also known as the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group, or a MARG, and this place does some seriously fascinating stuff, like turning fighter jets into drones. One aeroplane comes into the Boneyard on average each day, and one departs, and the aircraft experiences the following upon landing. Before taking off, the aircraft is examined, and the parts within are inventoried. A thorough wash is given to naval aircraft that formerly operated from aircraft carriers carriers, as a sort of special treatment. By doing this, any seawater or other corrosive substances that may be on the aircraft are removed. The aircraft is brought to the flush farm in order to protect the power plant. Any leftover jet fuel is emptied from the engine at this location. Soon later, the aeroplane is refueled with a lightweight 10 tenths oil, rather than jet fuel. After that, the staff starts the engine which forces oil into the fuel system and engine parts. While these parts are stored, the oil helps keep them intact. The engine's oil is then removed and put back in storage tanks for future usage. All aircraft then proceed to the cleaning station where they are washed and examined for any corrosion indicators. The actuators are taken out to make sure nothing strange occurs with the ejection seats. While the aircraft is in storage, parts of the aeroplane are sealed with spraylet a black water-based latex compound, because deserts are hot and dusty. Barrier paper is an aluminized fabric material used to cover engine inlets and outlets. Spraylet and barrier paper are used to shield the aircraft from birds that may otherwise get into the engines, as well as from dust. A white coating is put on top of the black coating, which reflects most of the sunlight to prevent the cockpit temperature from rising and damaging the interior components while the aircraft is exposed to the sun for months or years even when it's extremely hot outside the, the interior temperature of the aircraft is kept within 10 to 15 degrees of the outside temperature thanks to this white coating here is when it gets interesting those layers of spraylet must eventually be removed before the aeroplane can be made flyable again because of this, the boundaries of the area to be sprayed are first marked with a white black plastic tape, akin to electrician's tape. In this manner, it will be simpler to remove the coating's exterior edges. The aeroplane is relocated to a designated storage location after the preservation procedure is finished. It's not like someone could just go in and steal these planes with no fuel in the tank. So why do they tether the aeroplane to the ground using cables? The employees of the boneyard are not worried of theft. Wind is to blame, given that they are built to fly by employing lift, aeroplanes can be moved by strong winds, which could result in damage to that particular aircraft, as well as any others nearby that are parked. In order to keep certain larger aircraft parked, 
up to 72 tie-downs may be required. Regeneration The process of removing an aircraft from storage and restoring it to flight is one of Amarg's key achievements. For instance, making these drones instead of those ones out of fighter jets. Large hangars are required for these regeneration programs, such as this $25 million, 4.5-year-old hangar. Someone must have reasoned that a huge pair of scissors would be appropriate for the opening ceremony of a huge hangar. Fortunately, a clever man brought his usual pair. With the conversion of 153 F-102 Delta daggers into its drone form, QF-102, to be employed as aerial targets, the first large-scale drone conversion started in the 1970s. The F-100 Super Saber, F-106 Delta Dart, F-4 Phantom, and F-16 Viper were added to the list of aircraft involved in regeneration. The reactivation of the QF-16 aerial targets takes three to four months. They may be operated manually or automatically. The aircraft is put through functional testing at least a few times by a Mark flight test pilots. Of course, the aircraft would be unmanned when utilized as an aerial target, I hope. If you're wondering why the tail is painted red, it's not because the F-16 has been modified to serve as an aerial target. It is actually a tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen, the, the first African-American military aviators in the U.S. Armed Forces, who painted the tail of their aircraft red during World War II, not only to make them more recognizable, but also as a symbol of their pride, bravery, and perseverance in the face of racial discrimination that was common at the time. Aside from regeneration initiatives, planes are occasionally taken out of storage to be sold. Two KC-130s that were formerly in use by the Marine Corps were sold to the Philippine Air Force in 2016 as part of the Foreign Military Sales Program. These aircraft can offer the Philippines greater airlift capability in the event of natural calamities like typhoons. Although some fleets of vintage aircraft are still in operation, many of their parts and accessories are no longer made. Each year, the Boneyard returns between $250 million and $500 million worth of airplane parts for use in fleets that would otherwise have to be grounded. However, not every plane in the Boneyard can be converted into spare parts. No parts are to be removed from Type 1000 aircraft since they have a high likelihood of resuming flight every four years. They are also thoroughly re-preserved. Only the aircraft's owner of the system program office, which focuses on a Addressing difficulties with aging aircraft, may reclaim Type 2000 aircraft for components. Any military branch or governmental organization may repossess Type 4000 aircraft that are deemed superfluous. Aircraft are decontaminated of their radioactive and hazardous components when they are no longer required. Then, they might either be handed to disposal companies that organize their sale as scrap or donated to museums. On the other hand, because of international agreements, several aeroplanes have had their wings removed. The Strategic Weapons Reduction Treaty is a nuclear weapons reduction pact between the United States and Russia that caps the number of heavy bombers and ICBMs that can be deployed with strategic nuclear warheads by each side at any given moment. In essence, the US and Russia decided to scale back a little bit since they both believe that they have far too many nuclear weapons and that required the Americans to disassemble 365 B-52s. Naturally, since Americans and Russians have such high levels of mutual trust, satellite and in-person visits were used to confirm that the demolition had been completed. One of the 17 facilities in the United States that Russian officials can visit to confirm that the pact is being followed is the Boneyard. All excess aircraft from the U.S. Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, Army, Coast Guard, and other organizations including NASA have been kept at the Boneyard since the early 1960s. Even some US allies, like Canada, who are nearby, have their aircraft stored at a Marg. Given all above, are you still of the opinion that the Boneyard is nothing more than an aircraft junkyard?